It was a bright and breezy morning, and the Raggy Dolls were happy and excited. I wish they wouldn't go so fast, thought Sad Sad. The night before, Hi-Fi had found a map. It showed the factory, and the big field, and the dark wood. Ooh, I wonder what lives in there, said Lucy. Thinking of monsters, she began to tremble. Back to Front suggested that there was only one way to find out, and Hi-Fi agreed. With an early start and a steady march across c c country, we could reach the d dark wood by m m midday, said Hi-Fi. Super, said Dotty. A nature ramble. Eh, uh, what is a ramble? asked Claude. A kind of expedition, explained Dotty. Ever such fun. Uh, we'll need some equipment, said Back to Front. Campus, binoculars, first aid. And we could take a picnic, said Princess. Ooh, can we have cream buns? asked Lucy. The thought of cream buns did something funny to Sad Sack's brain. He suddenly offered to carry everything. When are we going to have that picnic? thought Sad Sack. The Raggy Dolls marched on and on and on. The toy factory and the big field were soon left far behind. So was Sad Sack, but no one noticed. At last, they came to a stile. Hi-Fi held up his hand and studied his map. Th -th That's the dark wood, he said, pointing ahead. It looked big and mysterious and very dark. Zut muttered Claude. I hope there are no wolves in this dark wood. Lucy began to tremble. There's nothing to worry about, said Dotty firmly. Come on, everyone. But inside the wood, even Dotty looked nervous. Everywhere was silent and still. Not a leaf stirred. There wasn't a breath of wind. And the air smelt of mushrooms and toadstools. Suddenly, Whoa! the raggy dolls jumped with fright. That sounded like Sad Sack, whispered Lucy. Help! It is Sad Sack, cried Claude. A wolf has eaten him. Oh dear, wailed Lucy. R -r raggy dolls to the r rescue, shouted Hi-Fi and they all set off through the trees. I thought you'd never come, said Sad Sack, when at last the Raggy Dolls found him. They could see that something nasty had happened. Sad Sack was stuck in a trap. Its huge metal teeth had snapped shut, holding him fast so that he could hardly move. It's a good job you were carrying that rucksack, said Dotty, and the picnic hamper. Too right, agreed Back to Front. You might have been cut in half. Hi-Fi and Back to Front forced the trap open. It was the cruel kind of trap that farmers aren't allowed to use anymore. Lucy, Princess and Dotty made a great fuss of Sad Sack, who lay on his back, breathing heavily. <sighs> a bun might make me feel better, he moaned. Uh, a cream bun, or perhaps two. 
But at that moment, another trap went off. And far away amongst the trees, the raggy dolls heard another cry. Help! Help! Rubber raggy dolls to the rescue! This time, the victim was a squirrel. The dolls quickly freed it, but its tail would never look the same again. Watch out! There may be more traps, warned Dotty. And there were. Lots of them. Some were hidden in the grass, and some under the piles of leaves, and some amongst the tangled tree roots. It didn't take long for the raggy dolls to uncover them. Back to front, took out his toolkit, and made them all safe. Who could have put those dangerous traps in this wood? exclaimed Dotty. Mama, maybe it's a poacher. Uh, what is a poacher? asked Claude. Dotty explained that poachers are people who go hunting and fishing without permission on other people's property. Uh, don't look now, but we're being watched, warned Sadsack. Sure enough, lots of eyes were staring at them from the darkness under the trees. Whoever you are, come out at once, said Princess bravely. In no time, the raggy dolls were surrounded by all sorts of woodland creatures. Several of them looked the worse for wear, injured by traps. An old rabbit popped up out of his burrow. It's no longer safe here, he said. The dolls listened with horror as he told them about all the creatures who'd been caught in traps in the dark wood. A hedgehog, a fox, and five field mice who'd been left hanging by their tails. It's time for us to leave, said the old rabbit, sadly. Leave, cried Princess. Stuff hand nonsense. If anyone's leaving this wood, it must be that cruel poacher. Good thinking, agreed Dotty. But first we must find him. No problem, called back to front. He was already up a tree, looking through the binoculars. In a clearing on the other side of the dark wood, he saw a man carrying a trap. That's him, cried back to front. He's just going into his tent. Oh, how do we catch him? asked Lucy nervously. If he's in his t -t tent, it's easy, said Hi-Fi. I know just what to do. Let her listen. By the time the raggy dolls reached the tent, the poacher was fast asleep. He'd been laying traps all night, so he was very tired. He didn't hear the raggy dolls creeping up on him. Action st -st stations, whispered Hi-Fi. Dotty, Princess, Lucy and Claude loosened the pegs which held the tent to the ground. At the same time, Hi-Fi switched on his radio. He tuned it to the police wave band. At attention all cars, at attention all cars, called Hi-Fi. A poacher is camping in the clearing at the north end of the dark wood. He's using illegal traps over and out. Hi-Fi's radio made such a noise that the poacher stopped snoring and jumped up in alarm. And of course, down came the tent. He couldn't see where he was, and he fell into one of his own traps. It snapped shut on his beard, which made him look very silly. The police were soon on the scene. Hello, 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 said one. What have we here? A poacher, caught red-handed. You better come along with us, chummy. The other policeman clamped some handcuffs on his wrists. Well, let's trap the trapper, said back to front, and I don't feel a bit sorry for him. The raggy dolls watched as the police car drove away. Well done, chaps, said Dotty. Especially Hi-Fi. Oh, yes, agreed Princess. Hi-Fi has been absolutely super. Three cheers for Hi-Fi, said Lucy. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Meanwhile, 
Sadsack was busy unpacking the picnic hamper. He began eating cream buns. First one, then two, and then three, for luck. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, dogs like you and me. Raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, made him perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy dog chant. 